Apollo 1 was scheduled to launch on February 21st, 1967 from Launch Complex 34 with the goal of being the first crewed test of the Apollo Command and Service Module after two successful uncrewed launches. Instead, on January 27th, 1967, Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chafee were killed in a fire in the Command Module during a plugs-out test meant to test the spacecraft's systems before launch. Grissom had been the first to have a go at Gemini as well and was the right person to give Apollo its first full test. Ed White had proved himself by conducting America's first EVA. This would have been Roger Chafee's first mission, but he had served as Capcom for both Grissom's and White's previous missions, and after that had been tasked to learn about Apollo, so he knew the spacecraft inside and out. But even with all this experience and knowledge, the crew did not anticipate their fate. As Frank Borman noted to Congress in a hearing, it was ultimately down to a failure of imagination on all sides. Apollo 1 was already at the top of its Saturn 1B rocket, but that wasn't loaded with propellant, and the plugs out test meant that the command module was closed and disconnected from the launch pad systems and power. In space, the spacecraft operated with a 100% oxygen atmosphere at 5 psi, about a third of regular atmospheric pressure but it was pumped to 16.7 psi of pure oxygen, more than three times what it normally operates at, for this test. The reason for that was to drive out any nitrogen, but this made things that normally wouldn't have been flammable much more susceptible to catching on fire, including Velcro. The crew had objected to the amount of Velcro back in August, and it had been removed then, but somehow more Velcro had made it back in. Without a spark, that wasn't a problem, but there was a bit of wire that had lost its insulation because it had been rubbed away by a small door, and other easy-to-miss fault points. Aside from the Velcro issue, Grissom became frustrated by how many changes were being made to the command module after delivery, more than 600, but at the same time he remained confident in it. Rather than keep the rocket on the pad, we'll run the mission as it was supposed to take place. In the end, there was a fire, but the crew should have been able to get out. The problem was that the hatch swung in and required the cabin to be vented before the door could be moved, otherwise the internal pressure pushed it closed. The fire inside the cabin only increased the pressure, making the situation worse. The manufacturer of the module, North American, had originally wanted the hatch to open outward, allowing it to be blown away with explosive bolts in case of emergency. But as fate would have it, Gus Grissom's own Mercury mission, where his hatch bolts accidentally ignited on splashdown and caused the capsule to sink, led NASA to disagree. Without the explosive bolts and against the pressure building in the cabin, the crew could not get out in time. Had there been a rush to get Apollo ready that led to blindness on the part of everyone in the program? Certainly. But it wasn't for lack of preparation. Uncrewed tests have been done and the crew is properly familiar with the spacecraft. The spacecraft might have been successful in space, though the Block 2 Apollo altered in response to this tragedy was undoubtedly better. But no one fully recognized that a ground test like this carried risks too, or that the spacecraft might be susceptible before launch. After the flight of Apollo 7, following a delay in the program of a year and a half, Launch Complex 34, where the tragedy took place, retains its launch platform, which bears a plaque in remembrance of Grissom, White, and Chafee.